Asians are built different. I said it, Asians are built different. And I, not being racist, some people are gonna suggest it anyways, go ahead, don't care. Um, I'm going to be talking about the education system once again, because <laughs> Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, apparently made some changes that I wasn't made aware, I wasn't aware of until just yesterday. And as soon as I heard them, I thought that's exactly what I'd expect from the Asian community. Now, I just want to start off by saying this: that I have the utmost respect to the a lot of the Asian, particularly East Asian, I know I'm being very broad, but I feel like I can be broad because it's both the East Asian, very much South Asian, a lot of Asia. They are very serious about their education and more so about the effectiveness of their education, less so just ticking the check box that kids went to school. And that is probably why we find that they are do a lot of the most difficult jobs in the world and are some of the highest paying earners once they get into their adult careers. Obviously me being me, loves to study around the world to see what everybody's doing, as I've been saying. And I have been truly fascinated by so many things about the differences between schools in the Asian communities. But we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna first of all talk about this controversial um, ch changes that Rishi Sunak announced he wanted to make on October, 2023. So that just goes to show how late I am to the game. I was had other things going on at that time, right? So for starters, he wants to make English and maths compulsory up until the age of age 18. Now, for those of you who didn't know, if you're not from this country, currently you only have to get maths and English up to about a C, which is a five or six on this new one to nine scoring system. Um, and that is the basis level for pretty much all jobs is maths and English, a C, right? That's the most basic level. When I went to study, when I went to work at McDonald's at 16 years old, I was bewildered at the number of adults who were at the, my workplace who had not achieved a C in both maths and English at that time. That was 11 years ago now. I was surprised because I, at the time, was studying the 16 to 18, which was horror. Um, and so, yeah, so that's one of his plans. And part of the reason why, and another thing that he wants to do, we're gonna delve into the details in a moment. Another thing that he wants to do is have all of the kids, once they finish, they have to do like a year of like, um, I don't know, like not community service as such, but like, you know, doing some kind of community-based working and whatever experience. Now, this has caused a lot of upset to the young people. In fact, even to some of the older people, to be honest, although as per, as per the nature of a lot of the adult community of today, they're just judging the young people like, oh, you lot are just, are just lazy, whatever. Well, let me say something. From their frame of reference, because I'm an empathetic person and I'm not bitter and I'm not jealous, um, they have just gone through two years or have along of where all they had to do at school for a while was click onto Zoom with a teacher that may or may not be even showing their face because all the teachers weren't even bothering to show their faces in these Zoom calls, by the way, and whatever that people were doing to do their lessons at home in the comfort of their home. They're not getting up. They're not doing what the, whatever they do. They're just sitting there listening to somebody barking at them for however many different subjects every week or week getting lazy just like the rest of us. So let's not start pointing fingers is all I'm saying. We all got lazy during that period of time, okay? Now, first of all, and I just like to state this as well, because from where I'm sitting, and this is one of the reasons why I feel so passionately about all of this, growing up, I worked so damn hard, by the way, to get my degree, and it wasn't the education system because I had to keep reteaching myself stuff. That's why I'm so good at teaching, because everything I've learned in life, I've taught myself, majority of it. I've taught myself right? That's why I'm great at teaching. So had I been one of the university students that was told oh, all your lessons going to be online, I would have dropped the hell out. There's no way. There's no way I would have stayed at uni getting in debt just to be sitting at home for Zoom. Hell no. I didn't tell any of the young people I knew because I didn't want to be cause anything. So I let them go on and I just, I just 
in my mind was like, I respect you because I absolutely would never have. I barely even, I already knew from then where I had already worked things out. Like I said, at the age of 15, how the system was, because we was told that we were the guinea pig of the new system, right? So from the frame of reference of these young people today, they've already gone with that. They already are just used to being left to technology unsupervised, not really doing anything. Can I talk about something else that happened when I was growing up in this here country? When I was a lot younger, when I was probably, when I was about nine years old, 10 years old, you know, it started to pop up everywhere. These signs, no ball games, no this. So all these little fields, it wouldn't be like right outside somebody's house. There'd be like in between like where there's like a road and then there'd be like a whole big patch of grass where there's not even any houses or anything. And we used to go there and we used to play out. We used to play, you know, our, our different games, play football, play whatever. Yeah, all these signs started to pop up, no ball games. We weren't allowed to go out anymore. All these places, we were all of a sudden not allowed to go out and it just kept going and it just kept going and it just kept going. So when I walk around in this here town, it is very traumatizing for me, remembering the things that I used to be able to do that these kids today can't do when people are like, oh, they're just all inside on their phones, the phones that were paid for by the people that are complaining about it, who pay for the Wi-Fi that they're complaining about and the data that they're complaining about the kids using. Anyway, so that's where the kids are coming from, right? So they've lived a very comfortable life in the, in the sense of being comfortability and laziness, and they're even seeing the adults the same. We hear the adults are judging the kids for the laziness, but isn't it such a privilege for those of us in the Western society to even be struggling with things like obesity? When some people are happy when they've eaten one meal of just rice and something in a couple of days in other countries. Oh, how deluded we are, right? So I get where they're coming from, from their frame of reference. This sounds like a lot. All of a sudden I have to do maths and English. By the way, can I tell you that 16 to 18 education, A-levels that like I had to do, can I tell you that was the hardest of all the education I did? Harder than my physical degree. That was the most depressing period of my life. One of the most depressing periods of my life, age 16 to 18. And I did maths, further maths, chemistry, biology, right? One of the things he wants to change is he wants to diversify that. So it's not just four subjects, it's a bit more subjects. And he wants to move more to the, to the British back, uh, what is it? Baccalaureate, which I find so interesting because international students who come to study here, wow, is she an expert? International students who come to study here, they do this thing called an IB, the International Baccalaureate. That's why at a lot of private schools, instead of doing one exam board, for example, AQA, which is the most popular one done at most normal public schools, a lot of the private schools do a different one, which is called the IGCSE. IGCSE, International GCSE, because there has to be a different level to match the level of what the other international ones are doing. Okay, those exams are a lot harder. The IGCSC exams are a lot harder. There's the content is different. The questions are a lot more convoluted, takes a lot more problem solving skills. And if you ask me, I found it very fascinating. It was actually one of my students who pointed it out to me this year that certain topics don't come up in the IGCSC that are in the other GCSEs that are like, you know, AQA or whatever, like other um, subjects, other um other ones that are just only for the United Kingdom or for the for England, let's just say, for all intents and purposes, right? And the topics, at least as far as chemistry, that are not included in the international one are all the ones that could be politically, um, what's the word, politically problematic to teach because it's teaching what we want the kids to think about these certain topics and these certain things, things like burning fossil fuels because how are you going to teach about the, the the issues with burning fossil fuels and all of this stuff in other countries where you're going to harvest said fossil fuels it's going to create a bit of a conflict there isn't it yeah so these topics they don't come up this is what i'm saying the education system is a scam okay so there's that so he wants to now move over to that i actually kind of respect rishi sunak for this because you know what this is what's happening in other places of the world anyway this whole d diversifying of subjects and um, till later in life, this whole um, doing a year of whatever service in Korea, you got to do a year and a half in the war. If you're a young man, you go in a war. It's happening. The only reason you're not doing it is because you got a gold medal in the Olympics. Even in Nigeria, a Nigerian person, a Nigerian friend of mine was telling me that in Nigeria, once they finish, they all do this two year thing where they go and they go and like volunteer in another part of the country. And it was all a part of how they wanted to 
overcome and help rectify things of the civil wars that were going on. So each side basically swaps all the students and they all go and do this for a couple of years. So basically what I'm trying to say is in other parts of the, the world, this is normal. This right here is normal. But obviously for those of us who were coddled and weak in the West, this is violence. And so I discovered that apparently the kids are all making TikToks about this and Instagram reels talking about how whatever with Rishi Sunak. It gets deeper and it gets more interesting, you guys. Because so, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the level of mathematics required from age 16 to 18 is unreasonable. Well, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Let's actually talk about the maths thing here. Oh, wait, we've got some comments from some teachers. Um, so one teacher says... Um, uh, what do the teachers say? So this is an article from The Independent. Reaction from teachers has been mixed so far. The Association of School and College Leaders said that the idea has merit, but added that there has been no discussion with the education sector as of yet. Classic, classic, just like what they do in the NHS, make all these decisions and the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the higher levels, the people who are not down doing the work, that the people who are on the floor are going to have to implement, not thinking about what that means, not asking them what would actually help, but just making decisions, right? That's like what I was saying to you guys about when I was the guinea pig, we were told we were the guinea pigs, our teachers were stressed at the time. You know why? Because the, all the PowerPoints, all the worksheets, all the everything that they'd been teaching for years that they built up, they now had to redo all of it because the government decided that they wanted to change everything. Teachers on social media raised concerns over staffing issues with one maths teacher writing, good luck in getting the teachers. Am I right? Am I right? And we're going to talk about the maths teachers in a second because what are the teachers that were struggling to have the most? The teachers that teach my, my, my subject. This is why I will always have a job. This is why I'm not going to be here getting paid peanuts anymore when I am like literally one of the most valuable people on the planet right now, to be honest with you. So um, another music teacher said, and yet there isn't any funding to improve what we do now. Mental. Won't happen anyway. They will be voted out before it happens. Why not just make teaching a profession more want, more want to join? Why not fund schools? Am I right? Oh my gosh. When I got into the, the, the things at my university, they did this whole, this whole movement, which I'm not going to say what it is because it's give away what my university was. And then all this funding came in and they were like, we have this big idea of what we're going to do. We're going to put all this funding. And me, the idiot, as per, was like, ended up being all in there they had my face everywhere all over the university right because I was a chemistry student but I was also a dance captain and so they loved it right and I didn't know what I was getting myself into but then when I did because now I was involved and now my face was everywhere and I'm on brochures and all these things at the university right yeah they get all this funding you know what they did with it they're like we're gonna create a courtyard where you can eat all these different foods meanwhile we can't afford the, the food that's in the, the cafeterias that are there already we're all hopping to tesco to get three pound meal deal because we can't afford to buy this stuff you're saying oh we're gonna transform this and we're gonna invest in that meanwhile we are having issues just scanning our student IDs to get into the freaking building. So I'm here seeing these new huge TVs with this 4K HD LG who knows what TVs showing all of this irrelevant stuff on the screens that has been invested in this whole thing. And meanwhile, I'm just trying to get to my lesson. I'm just trying to scan to go through the barriers to get in. And the barriers are not working and repeatedly having issues. I'm going to the library. I'm trying to get up the, in the library, get to the other floors of the library. And every other day, the, the, the lifts are broken. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> other teachers seem more optimistic about the rumoured changes. Um, Ollie Metcalf, a religious studies teacher from South London, said, I think it's a good idea. The current A-level system is too narrow. It's really specifically designed to send people to university when only about 40% of students go. That's nuts, by the way. And do you know why it's like that? Because it's so hard to get the grades, to get into the universities. And some of us only got in there because we were smart enough because I, I, I cracked the system. I realized, this is what I did, you guys. This is what I'm saying that I really, I'm really so grateful to the Lord that I gave my life to Jesus early on, right? 
So here's what I did. When I noticed what was happening in the system and I realized that, oh, the grades are just going to be whatever they're going to be, whenever they're going to be them. And I was doing my A-levels, which is 16 to 18, when you do the proper subjects as opposed to vocational studies. I realized that when I apply to university, I'm not going to apply to the university that I actually wanted to go to. I'm going to apply to a lower university because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get into university because I'm pretty sure they're going to screw all of us over with the grade boundaries because they're going to do the, and 1% of the population can have an A-star and 3% of the population can have an A because that's what they do now. They don't do the 50% is this, 60% is that. No. Lo and behold, boy, was I right. And boy, did I luck out for my decision because I was at the, the, I was at the sixth form in this country that was number one for grades in the country. The prime minister came and cut the tape and everything. There was ones everywhere. I had a little tote bag with our name on it, with a one. And there was us all studying. And guess what? Most of the people in my class didn't get into that. None of us, I don't think, I don't know if anybody actually did get into their class because we all agreed. We were like, we're all going to go out after this on results day. And it's either we're going to go out and we're going to cry together. We're going to go out and we'll celebrate. Yeah, we all went out and cried together, except for me, because I knew what was going on. So I planned in advance. I said, I know I'm going to choose a university that's lesser than the university that I actually want to go to, because I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get into the university that I want to get into. And I'm not trying to do another year of school. I, I decided I'm graduating at 21 because I'm done with this whole thing. 21 is when I graduate and I'm done. Right. And I'm absolutely done. Right. So fast forward to results day. First of all, when you apply for universities in this country, you find out which university, you find out if you got in before you actually collect your results because your results get sent to the universities first. So thank God, because when I got my, um, I got my university place at the university that I had put that was lower, but I didn't even get the grades to get into that. Virtually at least probably 60, 70% of my class who I would put myself at the bottom of the food chain. I'm just happy to be here. Like I wasn't one of the most like highest scoring students whatsoever. It was by the very much grace of God that I was even there, right? <clears throat> most of them didn't get into their first place, didn't get into their second place, had to redo the year, had to take all these different opportunities now at the number one sixth form in the country. And me and my friend, we both got into our universities because the universities had to accept lower grades because the, otherwise they wouldn't have students. So I just realized the system basically is what I'm saying. And I realized that it was trash and it was rigged. Anyways, (laughs) the 29 year old added, it is impractical in many ways as it's not preparing children for life after school. He's referring to the current sixth form system. He's exactly right. I think we should try to stay as broad and thematic as possible rather than narrowing, educating things as a skill rather than a subject. Exactly like what I do with my students, the logical thinking as a skill, problem solving as a skill, not a subject on a piece of paper that's supposed to define you and have the rest of everybody else define you and treat you and your intelligence as what it is according to this piece of paper. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. So let's go into this. So now we're looking at the issues with this mathematical issue. So the commonslibrary.parliament.uk forward slash research dash briefings forward slash CBP dash 9780 forward slash. The document we're looking at here is maths to 18 in England. And they're explaining this briefing explains where the government is up to with its plans to have all children, children studying some form of maths to 18. (laughs) <laughs> so then it talks about all of this on Jan- on the 4th of January 2023 Prime Minister Rishi Sunak set out his priorities yada 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 on the 17th of April Prime Minister made a speech on improving maths attainment in which he argued poor numeracy was socially acceptable and maths needed to be made more accessible so children did not fear it could not agree more with you which is why I'll be formally leaving the education system um, um, indefinitely until I can I, well I'll do my own education basically is what I'm saying I'm just not working for the system no more Um, in any way shape and form and for anybody who cares what the government has to say about their kids if you care what the government has to say about your kids and these stupid people babe I'm not the one listen to this (laughs) Uh, let's do this let's go to what bit here yeah let's go to here let's go to funding because I love talking about funding I always want to know where the money is 
that's why I'm like, you know what? Why we need to know where the money is. Like when they're like, oh, we can't afford to pay the NHS more than one percent extra. Then we will after COVID. After we all clapped like idiots on the freaking balconies on Thursdays at seven p.m. But we can offer the frontline workers and the people we care so much about and clapped for the win. But all we can do is give them a one percent pay rise. Some of them died. They put themselves at the face of death. They were willing to die on our behalf, and that's all we had to do. Horror. Funding. To achieve the aims of the Advanced British Standard, so this is what he's calling it, the ABS, the Advanced British Standard, the Department for Education, which, by the way, is what my new job is working with, the Department for Education. Oh, my gosh. These guys are the most... Oh, my gosh. I can't freaking stand these people. Set out associated funding of £600 million over the next two years. Great British pound sterling, of course. Much of this funding was focused on maths and boosting teacher recruitment and retention. I don't think they have any idea of how they're supposed to do that. An additional 60 million of funding to expand the reach of maths hubs, increasing the core maths and advanced maths premiums. You see what's the problem with all of this? Can I tell you what the problem is? The problem is the government thinks that they can just sort like, it's like people, this is like the same thing that parents do, right? It's insane to me. There are parents who are paying 30,000 great British pounds sterling, right? A year for their child in private school they're still having to pay more, right, for private tuition. How are we not seeing the problem here? How are we not seeing that just throwing money at stuff and offering more sessions and the same stupid curriculum and the same stupid system isn't helping anything? Can you guys tell that I'm the most passionate about the children? This is why I don't like thinking about the kids, you know, because it just wrecks my soul. Reaction and issues. Oh, this is the bit that I love because here we go. <clears throat> Much of the reaction of the government's plans for extending maths to 18 focused on how this ambition could be undermined by a shortage of specialist maths teachers. Indeed. Responding to the Prime Minister's April 2023 speech, Labour's Shadow Education Secretary Bridget Philipson said, once again, the Prime Minister needs to show his working. He cannot deliver this reheated empty pledge without more maths teachers but after 13 years of failing our children the Tory government repeatedly misses their target for new maths teachers with maths attainment gaps widening and existing teachers leading in their droves praise Jesus we need to do a max ex exodus from the system because it's like we're the teachers it's like the government are just the unnecessary middleman that's what I learned with this new job this is like this unnecessary middleman if somehow, as a community, we could come together and the people with their various skills, like I can teach whatever I can teach, other people can teach other things, everybody got something they can teach, something they can share with the community. If we did that and it was directly between the teaching, whatever the teaching is, and the parents, we could just cut out the middleman altogether. And I think, and I have even written down my ideas, by the way, <laughs> of how we can use that funding in a different way so that parents can have more autonomy on to who is teaching their kids, what their teachers are being taught. The teachers can have more autonomy about how they get to teach what they want to teach. And we don't all just have to teach with this stupid curriculum decided by God knows who, who did their, who did their education like 50 years ago. Like sometimes I look at the politicians, I'm like, y'all have, y'all are so old. Like I'm not going to lie. And I'm saying old, like I'm talking like Joe Biden. Okay, guys, I'm talking about you guys in your 40s and 50s. In fact, you guys are the ones I'm asking to, to bus up in this in this hour, actually. Because some of you have some more and more knowledge and experience and wisdom than someone like me has. And I'm here out here fighting by my damn self, right? So, <sighs> oh my goodness, this is really stressing me out. Similarly, the Liberal Democrats education spokesperson, Munira Wilson, described the plan as an empty promise until teacher recruitment and attention is addressed by the government. The Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union, Mary Bosted, argued, although a laudable aim, the workforce crisis in education meant the plan was unworkable. Other criticism came from the Association of College Chief Executive David Hughes, who said that the focus on ages 16 to 18 was short-sighted. I 100% agree with that because I think that splitting the, the groups like this doesn't make sense anyways. I have a whole different idea. of I've written my own curriculum anyways, you guys know this. <laughs> and action was needed to improve numeracy from exactly early ages through 16. Exactly. It should be like the whole education system should be like one long, like one long like timeline of events, not like you have this section of school and then this section of school, and this section of school and uh, those different sections, they can all have completely different things and different stuff. Like I was saying, at the one second, I'm doing the AQA um, exam board for maths in GCSE. Then I go to A-level and all of a sudden I'm doing OCI, MEI. 
completely different exam board, completely different way they like to ask questions, completely different way that they run their mark schemes, completely different like specification. So I'm the one who's sitting here all the time having to reread the stupid specification, the 2023 specification for AQA maths, the 2023 specification for ed ed Excel chemistry. Like it's so annoying. Like this is what I'm saying. And I'm, these hours aren't being paid for either because I have to do it because if I don't do it, then I'm not gonna be able to do my job. Get the freak out of here. <sighs> my goodness. Ugh. Ugh. I can't even think about this. It frustrates me so much. The General Secretary of Association of Co School and College Leaders, A ASCL, Jeff Barton, criticised the Prime Minister for not consulting with school and college leaders. Duh, once a freaking again. Once a freaking again. Ahead of his initial announcement and questioned the rationale for the plan. This is because A-level maths is the most popular A-level choice and students who do not achieve at least a grade four slash C. Okay, so now a C is a four. And you know what's funny about this whole number system? The, and this is why the kids are screwed. Depending on where you go, different people see a C as a different number from four to six. So if you're, the chances are that if you want to go to a better university or want to go to study maybe say A levels as opposed to doing um, um, vocational studies, you're more likely to be expected to have a six. If you're going for an employer and they want you to have a C, maybe a five. If you're going to study something that has nothing to do with maths at all, they might accept a C as a four. See what I'm saying? How the government and us as adults, we just overcomplicate things and everything becomes so unsimplified, even though everything should be so simple. Um, are already required to study either functional skills or GCSEs. So let me read that again from the start. Um, this is because A-level maths is the most popular A-level choice and students who do not achieve at least uh, grade four slash C in GCSE maths are already required to continue to study either functional skills or GCSE maths during their post-16 courses. There's a big issue with people finishing school at 16 and not being able to do maths. I can tell you that just trying to shove more maths down their throats through the same system is not going to help. I did not become the mathematician that I am because of the system. I left school thinking I was stupid. I didn't even think I was intelligent at school. I actually cried every results day. That's why I know how these kids feel because I was the guinea pig. If you guys don't know about the guinea pig thing, go watch the guinea pig video. So let's see, do we even care what the, yeah, we should care. The Education Committee scrutiny, the House of Commons Education Committee considered the government's plan for maths to 18 in an evidence session in February, 2023, and an accountability session with the then schools minister, Nick Gibb, and all these people who, in both sessions, the committee raised concerns about the lack of specialist maths teachers, pupils' enjoyment of maths, and the issue of persistent maths GCSE resets. Exactly, which is exactly what I'm even doing now. Some of the students that I'm teaching right now are retaking from last year. At 16. In April 2023, the Commons Education Committee published a report on the future of the post-16 qualifications and how effectively they prepare young people for the world of work. The, reported note, the report noted England was unusual, was unusual among comparative economies for not requiring the study of maths beyond 16 and said they were good, there were good reasons for introducing such a requirement, both for individuals and the economy. I'm going to comment on this because I have a theory as to why people do better in certain other countries, especially places like Korea and Japan, and such and, and such and such and such and it's got nothing to do with putting more money into the system i can tell you that for free in fact what we should be doing is the taxpayer should be able to pay, pay their taxes to where they want to pay their taxes to if we're going to tax them because i think all of you if you could instead of paying tax these folks would rather be able to make more decisions directly about where that money is going and that would actually make everybody happy. The kids would be happier. Us teachers would be looked after. And you would feel like your money, your hard-earned money, that you're going to your job every single day, working hard to provide for your family, waking up every day, trying to do your best. You guys, I don't think that it's that, like the, oh, the older generations and people and adults of today. It's not that I think you guys don't care. It's that I'm trying to get you to understand that what you think exists isn't what actually exists. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to tell you that you don't care. The fact that you do care is why I'm trying to tell you. Let's comment on this, what I think is the issue. In a lot of these other countries in the world, particularly in Asia, you know how they value education. But the way that they value education, particularly the parents, it's to the point where whatever has to happen for you to understand and get into a career, we are dedicated until the day you are like sorted in life. They don't do this, oh, once you're 18, you're on your own, you're screwed thing. 
they do the we are and this is exactly like biblical because in the bible what does it says and a man shall leave his mother and father and do what cling to his wife it doesn't say and a man when he turns 18 <laughs> do you see what i'm saying and i actually think this whole moving out at 18 thing is actually just another one of the scams of the kingdom of darkness but that's a conversation for another day so in a lot of these other asian people so i was focusing listen i was watching during covid i'll tell you guys what i was binge watching during covid i was watching all the girl the girls my age in korea because for the first time i was impressed by the cooking of women of my age and i was like to this day i eat a lot of korean food and it's definitely my favorite cuisine in the world right and I was just impressed and a lot of these girls very put together whatever whatever and it was the little things that I would notice about the communities that they had around them supporting them that got them to the place where by the time I'm watching them they have their own place they work on their own job they love their job they might work from home they might work in an office they might work whatever they're making good money they're saving they have a lot more money to spend they're able to actually do things like buying a mortgage they're allowed they're able to do things like spending money on things that they want to do they can afford to eat well eat healthily and everything they can manage their time very well and every step of the way they have a whole community of people who are dedicated in places like korea when a woman gives birth the way that the the mother-in-law their own mother steps in they're sending these huge these huge boxes of like food prepped all the best foods they make them special soup that's supposed to help you with breastfeeding they give you this this they they hone in when they go to another country it's the same when you go there they are doing everything in their power right they inspired me those korean grandmas i need to i need to find a korean grandma to like somehow the way that they go out of their way and it's an attitude of the adult population this is just what you do this is what we do this is what you do we are responsible for their education and then the education system is similar they have certain things that they do differently even if you look at like what they eat at school look at what they eat at school they eat again very balanced diets very nutritious foods that are going to fuel them on a governmental level in japan healthy eating is at a governmental level at a governmental level we eat well our governments, however, because a lot of them are getting rich and it's all of the big boys club and they're all, you know, putting money in each other's pockets. That's why all these hubs and stuff, I'm sure, is going to be their friend from whoever and whoever else that they were doing seances and rituals with in the, in the deep halls of Cambridge when they were all there, right? Putting money in each other's pockets. That's what they're doing. With our, with, that's what they're doing with the taxpayer's dollar. They're, they're saying, well, we're going to take the NHS, which is the biggest employer in the entire world, the most number of employees and because of a problem that we've decided exists that we haven't again bothered to even ask the people if it exists right and i've been watching again because i've known people who worked in healthcare my whole life living in this country and so i've heard stories all my life growing up about the things that goes on it's all the same story somebody from up there makes a decision it doesn't help the people down there the people down there are understaffed half the departments are understaffed in the, in the nhs understaffed people from this country don't want to work there because it's not economical you're not going to live a life and you can't even live a normal life a normal basic life when a lot of these jobs especially not as a graduate in 2024 that's why people qualify and they go to canada or they go to australia or something or even when other people come they don't even make it good enough to for, to keep them then they still leave anyway then they still leave anyway. But you know what the NHS is spending their money on when they can't spend an extra 1% or give money to the people that we're all clapping on the, on the freaking bulk of balconies and outside our doors for on Thursdays during COVID? Huh. We're going to turn all the uniform in the NHS into magenta. Everyone's going to have this magenta uniform. Amazing. Are you guys are saying what I'm saying here. You understand what I'm saying here. So I'm just like, you know, I've resolved within myself what I'm going to do. I hope the only disappointment, and this has really been my, the thing I've been crying about with the Lord, honestly, over the last like year and a half or so is that God, unfortunately, the things that need to be done, I can't do by myself, but I've been doing it by myself. And it's like, I'm trying to ring the alarm bell and ain't nobody caring, ain't nobody listening. And it's just the poor old children, our literal future. God forbid there's a world war right now. God forbid, because we are weak in the West these days. We are hella weak in the West. We're out here having all these emotional debates. 
We're having all these stupid problems like the Ozempic because we're all so overprivileged to the point that we're privileged enough. We're privileged enough to be obese, to have obesity and being overweight as a problem. Are you kidding me? And then we want to sit on our high horse feeling like we're the smart ones above the rest of the world and call this less less, less economically developed and this. Y'all better be praying on your knees there's not a world war. For real, for real. Because the only thing we've got is weapons. And I can assure you, them same people who are doing all of this stuff, taking your tax paying money to prepare their weapons, they don't care about you and they don't care about your kids either. So maybe... Maybe, just maybe, I'm not the crazy one. Maybe I'm not crazy to be so upset. Maybe we need to make a change. All I'm saying, if life's a game, when are we going to start playing to motherfucking win? I'm done.